Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my video on five things that every Thresh main should know. Let's get right into it. First thing we're going to talk about is the bunny foo foo, or rather, the flash lantern mechanic. How this is going to work is you're going to queue, flash, lantern, go back on your queue. This allows you to actually close the space between you and your ally a lot faster. Because if you lantern here after you queue and you follow up on the queue, right, whatever it is, your ally has to cover a lot more space to get to the lantern and follow up and help you kill the enemy, leaving a lot more time for your enemy to actually escape. Doing the flash lantern trick that I just showed you allows you to get that ally onto the enemy faster, helping you secure the kill before this person can actually escape. Number two, next thing we're gonna talk about is the lantern bluff, or rather what I like to call the fake lantern. How this is gonna work is let's say your AD carries with you, this is their bot lane, it's a regular laning phase, and throughout the laning phase, you just throw out these random lanterns, bluffing the fact that your jungler is there to gank. These guys are going to be like, oh shit, it's the jungler, we gotta back off. And eventually, the whole purpose of this is that when your jungler actually does come, like boom, it's me, you're going to lantern him, you're going to go in, these guys won't back off because they're so used to you bluffing it, but your jungler's going to take that lantern and you're going to be like, bop, you're dead, because you tried to call my bluff, but it wasn't a bluff this time. That's the whole purpose of the fake lantern in this situation. Another situation you can use it in is, let's say, I don't know, it's a Caitlyn or a Brand or just any other bot lane that zones the shit out of you. And this is your, I don't know, low range AD carry. It's a vein, and they really want this cannon mean that's sitting right where my mouse is, but they can't get it because of the zoning pressure that these two are applying. What you're gonna do is you're gonna lantern here, pretend your jungler's right, you're gonna walk into these guys if you just don't give a shit because your jungler's there. And these guys are gonna back off, your vein's gonna get that cannon minion because they're not there to stop it. And then, boom, your vein loves you. You're a god. That's all it is. Next thing we're gonna talk about in regards to fake lanterns, something I thought I'd mention, it's not really the same thing, but that's it. That's all you gotta do. Why? Because they're gonna flash away. Not all the time, obviously. It works a lot more in low wheels and stuff, but they're gonna flash away thinking it's a thresh lantern. Sorry, thinking it's a thresh queue and not a thresh lantern. Because thresh doesn't throw lanterns at enemies, right? Doing things he throws is that. That's a queue. They wanna flash that. They don't wanna get hit by that. That's literally a death sentence. So when you do throw your W on them, they're gonna think it's a Q and flash. That's the whole like logic behind it. Of course it doesn't work all the time, but it works like 5% of the time. Try it out, see if you like it, I don't know. It's just something I thought of that in there. Third thing I'm gonna talk about is the flay, because this is the single hardest ability Thresh has, in my opinion, and I had to mention it in a video of five things that Thresh players need to know. So anyways, let's talk about it. Um, Thresh flay can stop so many different things. Channels, escapes, engages, whatever it is. Like. I can list a few of them right now. Katarina Alt, Master EW, Alistar Combo, Leona Engage, Zack Engage, Lee Sin W, Lee Sin Q, like, uh, Vi Q, Jarvan Engage, RE Alt, Yasuo E. There's so many different abilities, and yet most Thresh players never flay them. This will make you look like a badass, I promise you. Obviously, it's going to take a lot of practice and time learning which abilities you can stop and reacting in time. But what helps a lot of the time is looking at the beginning of the game like, oh, oh there's nobody here, but usually there would be like what, five enemies. You can see at the start of the game which enemies there are. Make point in your mental image, whatever you want to call it, bro. Just make a mental note on which abilities you can actually stop that game so that when you watch the animations, watch for the animations, or you're just like, subconsciously remembering that these are the things that can stop this game you actually react in time because that's what it comes down to right? it just comes down to reacting in time you're able to react a lot faster because you already have that idea in your mind that this is going to happen if you're trying to react when you don't actually expect it it's going to be a lot harder anyways practice that a shit ton get good at it because you need to know how to do it as a freshman next thing i'm going to talk about is the using the w as something your allies can target what i mean by this is let's say i don't know your leeson's right here he's getting bopped by like a whole bunch of enemies and he doesn't have a ward to jump over this wall you're coming in you're like food i got you bro here just take this is that bad? No, because your Lee Sin can W to it and take the lantern further. You're able to get it down a lot faster, like here, than you would be able to if you wanted to throw it all the way there, right? Look at, look at the difference. Less time for them to kill him. He's able to W over to your lantern, take it all the way here. This works with more than just Lee Sin, works with Katarina Shunpo. And actually, another situation where it would work 
let's say it's a team fight. It's a 3v3 going down here. Your Bernogre top lane right here. He's got teleport, but you don't have any wards because you're full build level 18, but you don't have sight stone. I don't know why. It's the practice tool. Don't hate on me. What you're going to do, especially if you have like communications, your team of five, if you're playing flex queue, your duo, whatever it is, or even high elo. You know, high elo players know to do this a lot more. Low elo is going to be harder to pull off. But what you're going to do is you throw your lantern down. Your top laner or mid laner, whoever has teleport, is able to teleport onto that and turn around and team fight completely, right? It can help a lot in like so many different situations. But again, I never see Thresh players doing it. Moving on. Last thing we're going to talk about is Thresh's iconic ability, the death sentence. How do you hit this thing? God damn, nobody knows. I'm just kidding. I'm going to talk about first thing as something lesser known and lesser talked about. And that's going to be the direction you're facing. So when you come in, let's let, let's say you come in from here, what's going to happen is people are always going to try and sidestep the RQ. No matter what, people will always try and sidestep it. So when your, face, your character's facing this way, their subconscious is going to look at that and they're going to automatically dodge to the left because your character's facing to the right. The thing that Thresh does that like really fools people is when he queues, his body doesn't turn the direction he's queuing until the animation goes out and it's too late to react to. So when you're facing this way, they're going to assume that the Thresh queue is coming out this way, which is when you'll actually throw it to the left and they'll sidestep into it. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but it really like helps you decide on whether to throw it this way or this way. Let's say you're coming in from the bush, your body's facing a little bit to the left. You're going to throw it to the right because they subconsciously think the hook's coming out this way. They sidestep into it and you're able to get the sick hook. Your team like pings you for being a beast. You ping your master seven and you're like a hero. Next thing we're going to talk about actually in terms of hooks is the sweet spots. One's right here. They cannot dodge this no matter what. You can't actually dodge that thing. If you move that way, that way, there's nothing you can do. That's like the death zone. People know that, right? So sweet spot right here. Um, you, most people want to throw it there because that's the death zone and they're going to be running that way but your enemy isn't stupid half the time they know they die if they walk that way so when you throw your Q out in this situation you want to throw it right behind them they're going to dodge right back into it every time not every time but like 9 out of 10 times I swear to god they will dodge back into it dude. they always do because they know that's a death zone they don't want to be there and they assume you're going to throw it there so they're always going to back up this way and that's why you throw your Q right there another sweet spot right there why because you walk in they're right by the wall they're never going to sidestep this way because there's no space right they know they're dead if they sidestep this way and people always well there's no space to sidestep right like you literally can't go that way so they will always try to sidestep this way what does that mean you throw your cue right to the right of them they'll always sidestep into it even if they don't and they run straight your cue range is actually quite thick look at it you throw it to the right it's still going to like it's still going to be there. If you throw it right there, you're missing out a whole chunk of space that you could have queued them with, right? So if they do sidestep it, you're just an idiot. So if you queue right there, it'll actually cover this area too, and you'll be able to predict that sidestep, making you actually hit the queue a lot more. When it comes down to it, you really just have to practice and practice and practice, and eventually just start hitting up more hooks. But yeah, I think that's got to be the number one thing with Thresh, right? Thresh means got to know how to hit hooks. That is... That is it. That is my five things. But uh, I'd like to mention one thing actually super quick. Let's say they've got an AD carry right here and that's their Alistar. You want to hook them and stop the Alistar and gate at the same time. What I'm trying to say is you can play in your Q animation. Another thing you can actually do is you can hide your Q in that E hitbox. So it looks like that. You can actually see the Q because it's covered by the E. And this also makes your hook come out a little faster. So you're able to hook, hit that hook. Um, actually, last, last thing I'd like to mention is something that challenger players do. It's literally like super hard to pull off. I've never done it, but like I've seen it, so I just like to mention it. You're in super close range. You can kind of like, because I remember I mentioned how you can like flay in your Q animation. You're going to Q and you kind of like flay them in a way. Like it's kind of, if they're right there, Instead of flaying right there, you'd flay right there, and you'd kind of push them a little bit to the right, which is where you queue, so that you flay them into your queue in a super close range, in a way that they can't actually walk, because they're CC'd by your E, and your queue will hit them every single time in a close range. It's super hard to pull off, and I don't ever see it, but it is something that is done, so I just thought I'd be able to mention it.
Uh, yeah, anyways, that's the video. That's my five things. I hope you learned something. Best of luck on the rift. Peace out.